Hello, welcome back to my blog Edith English Literature. Today we are going to read Essays of Elia, that is of Charles Lamb. Elia has been the pen name by which Charles has written all those essays. Now those essays were published in two parts. In both these parts there are um, 50 odd essays. The first part which has included 30 odd essays are very important for us because Charles Lamb is very exquisite in reading and his is the writing which is at once romantic, personal, which touches our heart as if we are passing through the memory lens of someone's persona. Uh, the tone is genuine, Some, sometimes the humor and pathos are too much integrated into the storyline that we cannot separate them individually. But these are all interested readings. So uh, we have to study Charles Lamb minutely as a literary student. So let's concentrate our studies on Charles Lamb's Essays of Ilya. I will focus a general discussion on Charles Lamb's writing, his style, and of course, a few of the discussions of his important essays. To understand Charles Lamb, we have to understand the very person, the family background, and the very schooling of that person called Charles Lamb. Charles was the seventh and youngest child of John and Elizabeth and Lamb. All of his brothers and sisters died except John Lamb and Mary Ann, who survived through uh, childhood. Born in 1775, Charles continued his schooling at Christ Hospital. And at there, his association with his friendship with the different personage that shaped Charles Lamb in future artistic caliber, be it a poet, be it, a, be it an essayist or dramatist, whatever he took into writing or uh, become a success has some contribution uh, from his friendship with Coleridge, with that of his uh, friend James White. So those friendship, in fact, uh, made him a person or a writer that he probably been uh, in future years. In his school friendship, James White particularly was his chief intimate. But his admiration, the friendship that turned into admiration was his Coleridge, who inspired him in his early verses. Even he, when he spent his childhood holidays uh, at Blackswap, uh, Hertfordshire, the ma his maternal grandmother where Mrs. Field being a housekeeper, the family of plumbers. So all these years he fell in love with those early days and that nostalgia saved Charles Lamb. Maternal mothers, Mrs. Fields house. During that visit, he fell in love with a young lady whom in his essays we can find out as Alice Winterton and in his poems as Anna. The lady uh, fortunately or unfortunately married to a pawnbroker Bartram. So the failed love affairs with that of Alice made his life a ruined one. It is not clear or it is quite difficult to say whether his madness was that was the cause or the result of that breaking of his friendship. But soon afterwards he recovered from the madness and Lamb appeared in print. And he uh, produced writing in poems with that of friendship with Coleridge, Renoid and others. So his poetic career started even he uh, wrote a part of the play which was never a success. What gave um, Lamb a successful writer is his association with that of London magazine which 
he was introduced by Hazlitt in, nine, in 1820. And the famous Elia essays that we are going to read is the first published in London magazine. And that publication made an instant fame and for the rest of the uh, English literature, his essays are the assets. He gave to English prose a kind of essays which is personal, autobiographical and he made the essays a final laudable and lasting companionship. The memories of that person is visualized in his essays of Elia. He was often called Blossom of Other Men's Garden, but the blending of these blossoms in Lamb's own. Through his imagination, we come a phrase an individualized caliber of writing. The matter and manner are harmonized. We find in Lamb a kind of a fine art. Because he is enchantingly easy. There is no sense of vulgarity, simple choice of subject, and that subject is exclusively treated. And even a trivial thing becomes interesting in his writing. His essays are faithfully a tale of his the freedom, the simplicity, the grace of light, modern, a kind of a familiarity, intimacy with full of author's feelings and sentiments that can be told of Lamb's essays. A.G. Gardiner, a famous critic and friend, has said that the magic wand by Lamb has made everything possible in affluence writing. His writing can be an escape route from the drudgery of office work, as he had been a clerk. In Lamb's essays, we cannot find out any problems. But in his memories, there are pains, there are pathos. That pains and pathos are dealt with light humor, with a kind of dramatic intellect, taste. He has made a fabric of words by which those, pain, those pains, those memories, those reveries, those nostalgia is being soothed with a living imagination. He has escaped like that of a flying bird from the dark area of realities. Lamb started his literary work as a poet. He wrote light verses in the Latin meter. In 1798, Lamb wrote a beautiful romantic poem entitled The Old Familiar Face. This period was a crucial time for English poetry. William Wordsworth, in collaboration with Coleridge, published lyrical ballads in this volume of poetry is a turning point to the English literature. It also invoked the atmosphere of romantic movement. Charles Lamb bathed in the romantic sea of literature. The complete works of Charles Lamb are divided into three distinct periods. The first period consists of Lamb's early works. It comes to an end in roughly 1803. He attempted a tragedy in the style of his favorite Elizabethan playwrights. It was published in 1902, but it did not receive any success on the stage. A tale of Rosamund Grey and Old Blind Margaret a novel was composed in 1797 and published in next year. Along with critical study, Charles Lamb, in collaboration with his sister Mary Lamb, produced The Great Tales from Shakespeare in 1807. It had a very different treatment. This may be regarded as his first successful literary venture, which was primarily written for children. This literary work must attract the reader to further study its source. These 20 tales from Shakespeare's plays 
uh, designed to take Shakespeare familiar to young kids. The tales are told with delightful simplicity and a faithfulness of their originals, not lessened by the gentle salutary emphasis on the moral of the central situation. Shakespeare's own language is skillfully interwoven into the thread of a narrative forever possible. Mary wrote 14 comedies and Charles the six tragedies. The collection itself is a landmark rather turning point in the history of romantic women. Just to end this, their modest income, Charles Lamb collaborated with Mary Lamb in some books for children. Along with tales from Shakespeare, they are The Adventure of Ulysses, Mrs. Leicester School, Charles passed his leisure time by intense reading of Elizabethan dramatist. In 1808, he performed a critical literary work entitled Specimen of English Dramatic Poets Contemporary with Shakespeare. The range of this work was from Corboduck to Sartre. To Reflector, a quarterly magazine in, edited by League Hunt, Lamb contributed to long analytical essays called On the Genius and the Character of Hogarth and on the tragedies of Shakespeare considered with reference to their fitness for stage representation. Both pieces were paradoxical or aggressively unorthodox. In these two essays, Lamb's manner of convincing attract the readers. Lamb's criticism of life deals with the third period. We have received a cluster of essays from this period, essays of Ilya, consisted of 25 essays and last essays of Ilya, which was published 10 years later, 1833. Who is Ilya now? This question may arise. So Lamb himself has said as the origin of the immortal name, Ilya. He wanted to remain unidentified. Naturally, he took the name of a former clerk, Ilya. Of course, it's an Italian name. In his essays, Lamb shows himself as an egoist and he uses this literary form as a means of self-revelation. Lamb is not a moralist, not a psychologist. His object is not research. The genius of Lamb lay in his power of visualizing memories. Analysis of confession is neither he he is above all an artist. Passing through Lamb's imagination, this gathering of flowers, I mean the words, becomes something fresh and individual. His style is a mixture certainly of many styles, a chemical, not a mechanical mixture, integrated and thorough. The style of Charles Lamb's essays is gentle, old-fashioned, and irresistibly attractive. He was specially fond of old writers. He borrowed unconsciously from the early English dramatists, Barton's Anatomy of Melancholy and Brown's Religio Medici helped him too much to form his style. Montaigne writings impressed him the most. Moreover, Lamb's great Greek art and literature is imbibed the very spirit of his unique style. The essays of Ilie are of various kinds. They include literary appreciation, character sketches, fantasies, personal experiences, reminiscences, and many more. But they all had the similarity regarding the author's personal reaction. A very significant question appears whether essays of Ilya project a portrait of Charles Lamb or not. To his own persona, Lamb himself said, Let no one receive these narrations of Ilya for true records. They are in truth but shadows of fact, verisimilitudes, not varieties are setting but upon the remote edges and outskirts of history. Lamb loved to mystify his readers. 
this mystification made his language subtle and complicated. By this mystification, Lamb introduced his elder brother John Lamb and his sister Mary Lamb as cousins, namely James and Elia. Lamb's style consists of many styles. It is chemical, not a mechanical mixture. It is his own style. He frequently imitates the Elizabeth writers. He uses Latin words in his essays regularly. He uses words which are now obsolete. Lamb's style has humor, wit, and fun, which is based on intellect, humor on insight and sympathy, and fun on vigor and freshness of body and mind. Humor is very nearly related to pathos, which is beautifully expressed in Dream Children. One of the greatest critics, Hal Walker, gives a striking commentary on Lamb's style. Lamb's style is inseparable from his humor. His whim swim, as he called them, found their best expression. From personal mood of experience, Lamb leads his reader to see life and literature as he saw it. The wonderful combination of personal and universal interests make Lamb's essays remarkable. They continue the best tradition of Edison and still, emphasizing the quality of self-dramatization in Lamb's work. Craig aptly observes, the secret of Lamb's style is that he was himself an actor forever assuming some role at Oxford. I can hear play the gentleman in act the student. He was forever pretending to be scholastic philosopher or a 17th century preacher, dividing the human pieces into great new qualities and categories. Dennis Thompson calls Lamb style an assumed and easily assumable bag of tricks, embarrassing confectionary manner, and he blames Lamb for the degeneration of the essays, which lent itself to fake personality, studied irresponsibility, and a cultivation of literary mannerisms to hide emptiness of matter. Walter Patter says that Lamb's essays are beautiful with heroism, devoteness of the old Greek tragedy. Though the essays are brilliant, Lamb's popularity in the 20th century is gradually diminishing. But the fact is, Lamb is still read and appreciated. The essays of Elia are particularly autobiographical fragments from which we may reconstruct with little difficulty the inner life. Lamb is the best essayist of England and the most charming of his writing capability is his telling of tales of his memories, of his autobiographical imprints that happens as if through the monologue, through the violence of Lamb's own mind. Lamb ranks very high as an essayist by his fancy, pathos, humor, and insight. He is supreme essayist. He is superior to Edison in his tenderness of feeling. In richness of fancy, Goldsmith also comes no near to him. In delicacy and feelings, in humor and pathos, Lamb's excusedness and quietness is an epoch-making capability. Lamb's own style is woven together into one charming whole. The quaintness of the Elizabethan manners and the clearness and common sense of more modern times. His essays are of human interest. He deals with things that are of interest to him and that interest is taken interested by the readers and that is the success of Lamb as an essayist.
the memories of simple things, simple peoples, and often with the pathos of death or oblivion clinging about them, the accidents, the essential of life and death with which he deals. There lies the human interest, and that interest is within his essence. Hai's Hospital 5 and 30 years ago is a fascinating account of his time, the famous school of that time. The South Sea House is an equally fascinating description of the London office in where Lamb started his life as a clerk. Oxford in the vacation describes about the university education and older library of which Lamb had a strong desire. The praise of chimney sweepers and a complaint of the decay of maggots in the metropolis contain the streets of London. In these essays, Lamb described his day-to-day -day experiences. Lamb had a kind of reverence for the sweepers. He says that they put before mankind a kind of lesson which they, when they clean the chimneys, in the nipping air of a December morning, preach a lesson of practice to mankind. In a bachelor's complaint of the behavior of married people, Charles tried to find out the weaknesses of the married people. The old Margaret Hoy is a lamb's experience of seaside. The superannuated man is an excellent essay of lamb. He tells about the loneliness in the post-retirement period of Charles Lamb. He opens his autobiographical essay with Virgil's words, Sera tamin respixixt liberatus. Liberty hath remembered me, though late. In New Year's Eve, Lamb says about his feelings regarding the surroundings. I am in love with this green art, the face of town and country the unspeakable rural solitudes and the sweet security of streets. Lamb's humor and pathos are specially observed in Desertation on Roast Pig and Dream Children. Modern gallantry is the subject of general interest. In this essay, Lamb ironically remarks about so-called gallantry. Lamb got a permanent place. The subject of his essays were his childhood, his youth, his family, his native place, of course, that is London. The places he had visited or the characters he had known intimately. Through his essays, Lamb always tried to delight his readers. He never inflicted pain through his writings. He had no intention to deform the society either. So to understand Charles Lamb, we cannot detach the person from his writings uh, because in nowhere Charles Lamb's single drop of criticism or be it in writing in figurative or personal essays, we cannot have that uh, word that is not coming out from his heart. So his uh, heavier heart which is more burdened of his family problems, his internal madness and all those family problems that are related to poverty and those drug career of being a clerk and that is the only solace that we can find out in his life had been the friendships with a lot of critics and a lot of poets of that romantic era and Lee Hunt, Coldridge of course that are more influencing in his career or in his writing. So understanding Charles Lamb's, we must have to understand the very atmosphere of the then time. One thing that is also notably striking in uh, Charles Lamb is his uh, great fond or great love for Elizabethan dramatists. As we all know, tales from Shakespeare is being written by Charles Lamb, Mary Lamb, and this is the writing which is a uh, uh, driven from that love for the Elizabethan dramatists, particularly Shakespeare. So in understanding Charles Lamb, we must have to understand the very atmosphere and the very person which we appreciate as 
Charles Lamb, the humor and pathos, the person who humorously taken the entire pathos of pains in his life and paints it down for our writing and the exquisite essence of Elia is the result of it. So, if you like this discussion, I have tried my best in editing. Uh, like, share and comment and of course, subscribe.